we have what is the Lewis structure of HSO4 minus, and they've done it again so we can just see it. So with that being said, I'm glad they have HSO4 minus because, let me just write the question down first. We can actually say that what we're working with is an SO42 minus polyatomic anion. This is a sulfate anion. The reason why I wrote it like this first is because actually, for me at least, it helps me write things out appropriately. Because when I write it out this way, I avoid the mistake of putting the hydrogen on the sulfur. And I know you can see the picture here, and you can see how the oxygen is where the hydrogen attaches to. I will show you why that happens by first drawing the Lewis structure of a sulfate anion, okay? So that being said, sulfur and oxygen are both on the 16th column. So that's six electrons. So that'd be six times five, that's 30. And then plus that two, because there's two more based on this here, there's gonna be 32 electrons we're working with. Okay, so we have, um, the sulfur is gonna be in the middle, as you can see in this picture. All right, we're gonna first start with one bond here on each side, four oxygens, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and just, that is them. And then for the sulfur, it's right now sharing four of its six, so it's gonna be four, five, okay? And now I'm gonna just freely throw in the um, extra negative from the sulfate ion, that's two minus. I'm gonna go ahead and balance maybe this one and this one, okay? So I do wanna kind of mimic what the picture is doing. And so here, in order to quote unquote, get rid of the unpaired electrons, we're gonna form bonds. And sulfate or sulfur does break the octet rule, which is why this is allowed. And so we get this. Let me draw it in blue. S, double bond on each side. The oxygens, oxygens up here. And then these like that. And then this oxygen down here. So this would be a sulfate. Um, anion, okay? And now, when we do the formal charge, for sulfur, it likes to have two lone pairs and two bonds. But it can also be expanded to where you turn every lone pair into two bonds, to where you can say, oh, sulfur also likes to just have six bonds, which is what the sulfur in the middle is doing. The double bonds count as two bonds each. So now, with oxygen, it likes to have also two bonds and two lone pairs, but it can't really expand like sulfur. But let's compare what's happening here. These two oxygens on the left and right follow that, okay? But the top and the bottom have gone ahead to replace a bond with a lone pair. When you do that, you actually become more negative. In terms of your formal charge, you're taking a step in the negative direction. That is what sulfate looks like. So now when a hydrogen comes in, typically we just see the H plus minus its own business. Where would the H plus want to go? Any of these oxygens. It can go to the top one or the bottom one. Point being is that overall the H plus will be attracted to the negative side when it comes to the formal charges of this molecule. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw it be attached to over here just like we have in that picture. And that's how we got hydrogen sulfate ion for this molecule. Because had I just gone straight to draw it, I may have tried to squeeze the hydrogen on the sulfur, which is why I like to draw what I know first, which is a sulfate. And then I just added the hydrogen onto it. So with that, once you had the hydrogen onto it, 
you can see now this is how we got rid of that formal charge because this was an H plus, which is why I was able to just stick right on there. And now only, um, I guess, formal charge that's left of negative is up here. Hence how the whole thing is just one minus. And yes, when you do have sulfuric acid, H2SO4, that is because another hydrogen has come and taken care of that other negative formal charge. So now, time for question number 